Yo, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to J3 Entertainment. You guys know what time it is. Man, I'm ready to get into this review. What are we talking about? Bro, we are reviewing Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 1. Okay, okay. For those of you that don't know how we review shows, we talk about the good, the bad, and then we do a recap, and then we give a grade. Yes, sir, and we yeah. also spoil Every review that we do. Very true. Because we can't bite our tongue. We got to talk about this. Break room style. I mean, we already talked about it before we got on camera, so we got to let y'all yeah. know what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. So, Ronan. Yes. Where we going first? Good or bad? We're going to talk about the bad. All right. All right. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. But, but before we do that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go let's ahead. go on and talk about the elephant in the room first. Yeah. Then get on our bad. Okay. You ready for this, y'all? I'm ready. Here we go. Elephant in the room. Me? No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, the bad. <laughs> I need a hero. He wasn't present. Yes. So, but he was in the trailer. Might have to give a review for the trailer and then the show too. That's <laughs> crazy. The trailer was fire, bro. But if you are, you know, experiencing this world of He-Man, this is a direct sequel to He-Man in the Masters of the Universe original series. Yes. But for those newcomers that are coming in, they're expecting He-Man because He-Man was shown in the trailer. So they're going to be misguided and it's going to be like a misconduct because he's not here. So it's almost like false advertisement. Well, I will say this in all due honesty, He-Man was in the show. It just wasn't the main focus. Okay. And I think that's where we feel bamboozled. Yeah. Because uh, we saw a lot of He-Man, but not a lot of Tila. And a lot of Skeletor, which a lot of people are not complaining about, but Skeletor wasn't in the movie, uh, the show neither. Right. And I really wanted to see a lot of Skeletor. Um, so sh shame on you. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Smith. <laughs> Kevin yeah. Smith for bamboozling us like that. Yeah, I should have known that because you did that movie. Uh, uh, Tusk. Tusk. You bamboozled <laughs> on that too. Eh? I'll never forget that. I want my money back. <laughs> we should have got our money when he said it. Hey, man, I, I didn't Kevin hate it Kevin Smith much. said, yo, I know this movie's bad. If you guys want your money back, just say something. Now, I've never seen a director do that. That's tight. <laughs> but anyway. That's respect. So we were bamboozled. This He-Man dies in the beginning of the, of the show, and it kind of leaves you at a, like, okay, a standstill, like, all right, Grace Gold is like, yeah. what are we going to do now? And then the show starts. So that's, that's my great. My, my elephant in the, in oh, okay. the uh, you know, room. I will say the show uh, took a while to kind of find its footing and pacing, but it was cool just seeing Eternia as a character and that everyone's battling for this throne and going after this power. Usually in the original show, we only got like the main spectrum of He-Man battling and we were following him, but it was cool to see the sidekicks yeah. and the villain perspective of what was going on. We see how important uh, being on that throne of Eternia is and how they were fighting. You, they were going up against the Grey Skull Warriors, so I like the mythology and stuff like that. So it actually gave the side characters some shine, which was kind of like a big thing because in the old show, He Man was always front and center. Yeah, yeah. So if but, you're but, okay with uh, that, then you'll like this show because you know they're always this thing like, oh, what about the other characters? So you get to see the other characters. I'm gonna say this, man. From what I know of He Man, man, I watched it. He Man was always the main event. Yeah. Right. And, that's and, why I said and we that. always saw the other side characters, right? So I'm gonna go again and say my bad. One of my bads for this show is not all the voices mix well with me. Okay. I love Sarah Michelle Gellar, but I thought her as a voice actress for Tila did not fit Tila's body. Gotcha. Threw me out immediately. I said that's Buffy. Oh, and you knew like right? Away. Okay. Like that? It didn't. It was. I found out after I finished it. I was like, whoa, that was Sarah? Like, it, it, I didn't like some of the voice acting. Some of the voices worked. Don't get me wrong. Some of the voices worked. Like, I like or Orko. Orko. I like, uh, Orko. I like his I like his voice. The villains I like, was on point, though. I, Skeletor, yeah. obviously, bro. Yeah. Even He-Man was dope. Um, but it was just Tila. Evelyn was good. I like Evelyn. It's just oh, the, ma the, main, the main star, which was Tila, just didn't move it for me as far as okay. voice wise. I, I that was a bad for me, bro. All right, I will say uh, the show started to pick up for me around like episode four and five. Yeah. Even though this is not a complete season, but episodes one through three felt like filler to me. And then it also didn't help that He Man died, so it was just Twice. like, all right, yeah, <laughs> like it was like get to it. And I think by episode four and five, I was like, okay, I kind of see where they're going. So it's a battle for this throne, and they're trying to find out who was going to be the next ruler of Eternia and then they came together and then uh Andra was kind of another cool link because she wasn't really a big factor in the old show she yeah. was in like maybe one episode but she was like in the comics like one issue so it was cool that they were able to bring new light to her yeah yeah, yeah. I thought that was dope because now you have free range to give her new energy and new arcs 
and I kind of create her for those that have never been introduced to her. Yeah. So I like that we got new light and new energy in this series as far as like characters, because again, he man doesn't have that big following like that. So they had a chance to rebrand and reintroduce people. But for those that are familiar to this, you're going to be like, we need an actual continuational sequel. This is going to feel like a remake for those that have never seen the other stuff. Uh, I would say uh, another bad for me, obviously, is the elephant in the room being bamboozled. I have no problem with Xena the Warrior Princess and Gabriella. I loved the Xena the Warrior Princess show. And I loved Hercules. And I love the fact, and I'm using that as an as a example. I love the fact that neither one of them lost their thunder when they met each other. Hercules, Kevin Serbo was always Hercules. Lucy yeah. Lawless was always Xena. No matter what, even Ares, the bootleg, Jason Momoa, but he looks like uh, they were true uh, to a who porn they star. Were. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? You know, they always, like, stay true to who they, who they were. Eolus, bro, you know what I mean? They, they, they were, Bruce Campbell, bro, he was yeah. the, the, the thief. And, they like, had the respect. They, they, had always, they always too. kept their own vibe, right? Yeah. They never lost their vibe. The biggest disappointment of this show is that the agenda of it overthrown the story of it. And I didn't like that. And I thought that was poorly done. Because a uh, man of arms is that dude. Yeah. And, and Tila is a baddie, bro. Yeah. Tila gets it done. Yep. This is no joke. I, I respect that. I love it. But when you don't allow man of arms to do his thing and you, you take him away out of scenarios so he can't be that dude, I don't like that. And that's what hurt the story for me because Evil Land is tight. Yeah. Just nothing. I'm, I'm not knocking none of the female characters. They're dope. No, they are. They, right? Because they've always been dope. You got to be dope to work with He Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, He Man is they're tier one. They're running the show. Like, they're He's running tier the one. show. And the respect so that, no problem, that He Man's not in the show. Right, right. And his team is still putting in work. Yeah. Shows mad love for He Man because it's like He Man's really that tight. This is, his, this is his group. You do make a good point about uh, Man at Arms. He was doing more of taking orders instead of giving orders. And he was a father and but, soldier. But so. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I just don't like the fact that you're not using him. Yeah, that's like, what wait, I mean. Wait, 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 I mean wait, wait, what are we doing? Because a character like Man at Arms, I mean, he has a lot of history and baggage that comes with him. He but, should be like, telling like, us he's like, He's like, yo, on. I want to come. No, you stay behind. Do that. They'll need you over here. No, F that. I want to see Man of Arms. I want to see these characters because if I can't get He-Man, I want to get the other characters that I like. If you're going to show everybody, show everybody be the best. And this is another thing. This is a dope segue. So another, it's a positive and a negative, but I will say, because this is a show about heroes, yeah. but the villains are the stars. Oh, yeah. They're the ones that are the highlight. And I, I'm noticing this pattern as of lately. The villains are taking over the hero shows. And it can work depending on how you write it and how you introduce it to an audience. When it's forced, it doesn't work because... You advertise people are coming to see heroes. Yeah. But we're watching the villains and we're getting connected to the villains. And it's not by choice. It's because that's what's thrown at us. So it's not like, oh, I'm growing with them. It's that I have no choice because my hero is no longer the star. Yeah. But I mean. So it's, it's a default. But the villains are great. The voice actors uh, match up. All that stuff's cool. It's just that this is about Masters of the Universe. The people that are protecting Masters of the Universe. But we're focusing on the villains. And I think for some people, that's going to rub people the wrong way. But I didn't have a problem with it. But like I said, personally, I don't have a problem. I just don't like when you shun other characters that are men so the women can shine. But this goes back when, to the false advertisement. When, when you could, you could have, Tila could have went side by side with her pops and men of arms and made things happen. Obviously. Yeah. You know what I mean? And again, I, this is not the complete season. It's only like five true, episodes. True. But I didn't, I didn't like the way they handled that. Uh, it, it was like uh, what's what's his robot name? I forgot. Uh, Roboto. Roboto. Yeah. I didn't like 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 Roboto's doing his thing, but oh, he has to die. Yeah, I thought that was. Or Orko doing his thing. Oh, he has to die. And Orko was tight. Like really like it's like you're killing off the main characters, so now all your substitute all your substitutes are only females, and that right to there, the story. I think is trash, and that's bad writing because you're not letting the team shine. For the team being the team. You don't have to dumb down a female character. You don't have to dumb down a male character. You have to write the characters so they can be both tight. So we can enjoy both of them. Like Lucy Lawless is Xena. Yeah. And Kevin Serbo is Hercules. And this is why I said the beginning episodes felt like filler. And then it got good at the end. But yeah. it was too late. Because it yeah. was like, it's, this is an outro now. Where I'm out. Yeah. Where's the rest? So, But, 
But for the most part, for me, that's that's really my only gripe. That's my bad part about this show. Like yeah. it was just the way they handled He Man, the advertising part. But then how you dumb down the male characters around you, and then when Tila goes against the male characters, you literally make the villains dummies. Like you, you, you take away from them. All right, no, I, that's fair. I didn't that's like that. Absolutely fair. I will say I'm gonna get to the good because it sounds like I'm I'm bashing. And no, I'm no, not. no. We got, we yeah. going good. That's all I have. So I'm right by it. as far as the good, I will say that they do so make we good. Yeah, we on oh, good. Okay, we on there good. Go. But we have to address that stuff. Um, I will say that it is interesting that they made some bold choices that upset people to see how people will react, you know, taking risks and things like that instead of playing it safe, you know, and this day and age of social media, we know things are going to happen before we even see the product. Right, right, So right. we came into it like, oh, okay, they actually just did that in the first two episodes. I, I thought that was interesting. You know, I didn't agree with it, but I'm like, hey, it keeps me on my toes. Let me see how else they're going to, what else they're going to do. And then yeah. I thought the, uh, the animation was tight. It kind of lined up with the original Ooh, ones. They had uh, very anime influence. I thought the music was popping as far as uh, bringing that heroic villain s style to it. It brought me back to an age of, like, nostalgia cartoons. It, it felt epic, you know, even though things were missing. You know, they, they brought that energy with the animation style and things like that. I thought some of the voice acting was pretty good. Um, I like the action. You know, the technical stuff is cool. Well, I'll, I'll say this. For good for me, personally, no matter... All the BS that they put in the show. God damn it, it was entertaining. Yeah. I watched it all the way through. Like, I didn't stop watching it. And I wasn't hate watching it neither. I was like, yeah. I was like, man, why they do that? They didn't have to do that. They right, not, right. It was more of like, why? You know what I mean? But it still was entertaining because number one thing is He-Man Squad is tight. And you want to see how Tila and them were going to put down, put them hands down, bro. Yeah. I was really rooting for the team to get the fix Eternia. Like, I was rooting for that. I, I wanted to see how it was going to play out because... To me personally, I felt like He Man is gonna come back. Obviously, like, and this is what I want to understand. He's he's not dead. He, he's gonna come he's back, back. But it's just the way they handled it yeah. throughout the show. But it's very entertaining because number one thing, the action is on point. Yeah. So bravo for that. Yeah. You rarely get shows like this where you, you actually have great action. Um, the animation, the colors. The scheme, seeing the villains, like you said. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, the 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 Iro. What's his name? Triclops. 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 Bro, he was tight. Triclops. Henry I could, Rollins. I man. couldn't stop laughing, bro. Because <laughs> oh boy, pimped him up. I was like, bro. he was like, Shh, and he frowned up, bro. That is how you bring a toy to life like that. Like Epic. stuff like that was really dope. Seeing animation wise, like I really enjoyed it. Like I can't wait for part two. For yeah. the for the most part, I think they're gonna. Oh, they're, I think they're gonna kick the doors down now that people have an idea of what they're doing and that there will be changes and that there will be risky decisions made. I think that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, I think people need that heads up of what they're getting into because sometimes there's different audiences. People want to know what they're getting right away, and then there's others that just want to be surprised. Yeah, and I understand both arguments. But you only. But the thing about being surprised and and I feel like shame on Kevin Smith for this. Is that if you were just doing a He Man, like if you did Master Universe and you didn't show He Man, then you wasn't gonna get the rep, the rep that you thought you was gonna get, and you played us. What if he did this though? And this is just a hypothetical thing. Yeah. I'm not even nothing official. Just what if? What if Marvel? <laughs> <laughs> what if he literally like He Man didn't advertise him? He's in the show, and we we didn't know anything, and. He said, okay, this is Tila and Masters of the Universe Revelation. But he, man, showed up in the final episode, and then season two was all about him. Would people be okay with that? I think we would have never even, because, like. Because, like you said, we knew t the show was about Tila. Would there be an uproar? Absolutely. And that's why we were bamboozled. But, I mean, if, if you knew that going in and they That's why we got bamboozled. Because yeah. they knew. Yeah. They knew. You know how people are. Yeah. Granted, I would have gave it a chance. Like, I, I would have watched it because I would have been like, okay. Well, as long as the old old squad is in, then yeah, we don't have to have He Man every episode. You know, that's gonna right, be right. very cliche. And that's where I was getting at. Yeah, I'm I'm with it. It's just I feel that they shouldn't have did the trailer like that. The trailer was shows, lit, bro. There are superhero shows and stuff like that that gives an entire season dedicated to specific main characters to where like each season is dedicated to each person getting time and getting growth and then by the finale we got a team based season. What? Well, you know, I you don't see that as much. But I'm just example. Yeah. But it's just the way, and maybe I, maybe I'm taking it too far. But you guys all remember how they did Batwoman, and how Batwoman was the new Batman. It was like, stop it, chick. 
<laughs> stop it. Stop it. You're not Batman. By default. Yeah. Like, you're good. Yeah. But you're not God. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's kind of how they, they manipulated the story yeah. around the female characters, which of like I said, I didn't like. Yeah. But for the most part, I enjoyed the show. I enjoyed the show. Very too. enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, had a lot of fun watching it, seeing, like you said, the villains come out and shine, yeah. seeing characters that we never really got a chance to know and we got a chance to learn. And they actually put backstory on a lot of the characters, yeah. which I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. I, I like want to see more of Andra. Cause like she's kind of like getting a rebirth right now. Which which season two, I mean part two, most likely going to show us yeah. on a darker s- scale because Skeletor is back yeah. and he's the master of the universe. So and well, I want to talk about my scene, but that was something that I was like, okay, you you got me for part two. That was a good ending. I will say my favorite moments in the show was when uh, they were going after the there was this clan that was going after the motherboards and uh, yeah, Triclops yeah, yeah, yeah. was there. That was a tight scene. Cause you see them all in action, and then you're seeing uh, power sets and skills. And uh, Skeletor came in and was besting the old girl before the, he opened up the dimension. Bruh, crazy! I think it was like episode two or three. I think it was like three or two. I, I'm a, my favorite part is episode six at the very end when Skeletor says, "Come with me," right? And Evil Land and uh, Beast she switched sides. Beast, Beast was the name. Uh, uh, Beast Man. Yeah. Beast Man was like, they didn't want to though. Like they was like, yo. I got a chance to know the good side, and it ain't that bad. Yeah, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, was like, like yo. Aww. So that lets me know. I think Evil and, and Beast Man is going to change up on him. Oh yeah, because she was like, I kind of liked you guys. Yeah, you know. And then it was like, yeah, now we're bad again. No you know hard I mean? feeling. Yeah. And then they walked off. Like, I like that because we got a lot of a lot of depth on Evil and and her character and, and about it. We got to, I got to understand her more. So I really enjoy that about this show. We yeah. got to learn more characters. I just don't like the way they shun certain stuff, man. I wish yeah. they just didn't, they kept it so organic. Tila would have shined on her own. Yeah. Cause we would obviously see that she was going to be the next in line. Even if, even if he man, like on some real stuff, she's literally the next in line. Yeah. Like she's the only one that has a good, the best chance, the best he man. And it's a, uh, it, it's, it's a shame that, you know, you have to, get on board with her by default like this but she does her job yeah she, she i would gets, say she that, gets that'd it be done. natural man she she had her arc and it was strong and, and you know they gave her a lot to do and she wasn't just like filler mm-hmm. she she served her purpose don't get us wrong yeah it's just how they introduced us to the audience to watch her and follow her it, it, it wasn't organic yeah not at all because even if they did not do what they did i would have still watched and followed on my own but just because i know the history of tesla yeah, and what she's it. about what's the worst yeah so it, it's just you got to be fair when you are treating uh characters uh respectfully with these heroes and villains you got to really sit down and like organically introduce them properly yeah because again you're building a universe and you're coming on to something that has a history already so it is very important how you introduce and revamp something like this in 2021. Yeah. Can you imagine them doing She-Ra and they make it all about He-Man? Right. They'd be hot. That'd be disrespect. Like, damn, I, I came to see, She-Ra. I came to see She-Ra. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm about to do it. Same no, thing no, no, goes no. either way, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's for anybody. So. Good show, though. Ronan, what we giving Masters of the Universe Revelation, part one. Uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation. Good fun, good action. Uh, still warming up to it. Uh, I think volume two is going to be a little bit better because oh, yeah. now that we're familiar with what we're getting with, I think it's a B show. It's a B. Word. Uh, I want to see more. A very rocky beginning because yeah. it, was, it, was, it was interesting but slow at some points, and then it really kicked off, like you said, episode four and yeah. five, and it really shot off, and I think it's really going to keep going forward. I'm going to have to second with you with that. Uh, it's not a B for me, but it is a B minus show. Very okay. interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I low key watched it twice already, but I just wanted to like I I was really like just learning the characters a little bit more. They yeah. were very interesting. The, the writing skill on the character development I thought was really good. I just don't like that you just kind of like brush characters away that were men. Yeah. So the other characters can shine when they could have just been there together and shine together. And let us be the let us as the viewers be the decision maker on who we're supposed to like. Yeah. Don't make us like who you want us to like. Let us be the decision maker. It's crazy. That's old school television. How uh, they they wrote their characters and how they weren't just afraid to kill off anybody. It had that horror movie effect like anybody can go. And I'm with that because yeah. this is this is a that's world cool. of destruction right now. So it's a very violent show and intense in that sense. And that's also another positive too. Uh, the show does have stakes. Yeah, stakes are there. Even though it's fantasy, is very grounded. And 
for them to really modernize He-Man like that. That I respect. I thought that was cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Yes. We kept that 100 with y'all, man. Oh, yeah. If you're new to the channel, going to push that subscribe button. Thumbs up this video. And don't forget to share Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All the above. Also, put in the comments down below, what did you guys think about Masters of the Universe Revelation? Did you like it? Yay. Or did you hate it? Nah. I want to know. And uh, if you don't know who I am, I am J3. I'm Ronan Shogun, Ninja Assassin. I have the power. Yes, I do. Yes. And we out.